Um, excuse me. I was using that. Oh well. At least I got a hole drilled on the other side. Gonna have to hold on to that drill bit until the water drains out of here. Given some plants a soak that I just brought out, I went ahead and filled it up with water and let it slowly drain out so that they'd be able to take in a little bit more water. But it ain't my drill bit, so that's just, it's fine. Nothing wrong with that, right, Tuck? Right, Tuck? Good morning, okay. Well, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? If you're good, I'm great. Uh, neighbors are getting new sighting, so it might be kind of a noisy week. Just throwing that out there. Say week, video, week. I film every day of the week for the most part. But what I meant to say was just video. No plans for the vlog, just going with the flow. Still at the mercy of the weather. It was supposed to be like a beautiful, sunny, like gorgeous week every single day. And then the forecast decided to be like, you know what, nah, you need another week of rain, which I could agree with actually, I mean, we could use the rain. So nothing wrong with that. The rain's a good thing. There was some flooding back here. So this is actually an improvement. Yesterday, the water was just like brown. Just, it was disgusting. So it's starting to clear up a little bit. So that's good, but the, we had like a couple inches of rain in a few hours and it just washed everything out from the berms and over these walls and just right down into the pool. So we got to have kind of like that fun natural pond vibe going on. Uh, Toby, 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 what are you doing? I know what you're doing, get out of there. Leave those squirrels alone. He's out. the chipmunks, they live underneath. Like there's a little pipe down there and they have like a whole tunnel system behind that wall. And that's, he's a sweetheart, but when it comes to those chipmunks, not so much. I <laughs> still need to move this pile of mulch. I'll go ahead and do that. There's supposed to be somebody else coming out to give an estimate on this tree today. I, I don't know. I'm done talking about the magnolia tree. It'll either be gone or here for a while. I don't know. Okay, I know I just said I wasn't going to talk about it, but the person showed up right after I turned the camera off and said they could cut this down in like two weeks for a very good price, but it didn't sound like they could dig the root ball out. I'm like, well, I can, I can cut this down. I got all that other stuff off. So I'm still thinking about what to do there. With the root ball though, over here, and I also have a big pine that died dirt. We had too much rain last year. Yeah, I guess I could show it to you. Kind of, it's back here. I'm gonna talk fast because it just started raining again. It's like off and on and off and on and off and on. So uh, I think I can use a, like dig, dig around this, cut the roots out and use a farm jack to get that out. Cause this needs to be replanted. So that has to go. That's why there's honeysuckle back here. The wild kind that are not even, it's not native, the weedy kind, but I just, who cares that all that's gotta go. I'm still, I'm, I'm gonna give that a shot and maybe I'll do the same with the magnolia. I don't know. The stump of the magnolia is a lot bigger. Okay, and then I'm <laughs> taking shelter under the umbrella here. It's supposed to be like this, like, off and on pretty much maybe all week they're saying wednesday might be nice but they were saying this whole week was going to be nice so uh i'm not going to do what i did last week which was like film in 15 minute increments a few times a week like basically whenever the sun would peek out that was really stressful for me to pull off and uh i don't want to do it again and it makes getting things done take a really long time so why don't i just tell you what i'm gonna do and if i'm able to film it while i do it then i will but basically i need to bring the eureka palm out and when i move the eureka palm out i usually keep it like over here in the dark and give it some time to harden off. The thing is like, no matter how, I, every single time I've done that, it's up to like six weeks, I've let it acclimate to the light and it's still, the, it still bleaches out. And since it's supposed to be cloudy for a few days, then even when it's going to be sunny, it's gonna be like partly sunny. I think I might just go ahead and stick it over here, right here, which means I need to clear all this out, which is fine because every all the perennials from last year have popped up enough that I can start placing them where they actually need to go. This little, <laughs> the little fiddle is hardened off enough. Like everything over here can be moved to a better spot. They were just sitting here to adjust to being outside. And so it's easier to water everything. I'm gonna place things and get things rearranged. Hopefully it's not going to look like breathtaking. I'm not going to set it up and make it look beautiful right now, but I'll at least get things where they're kind of supposed to be. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to do it though. Did it stop raining? No, it's still misting. It's this mist. It's like a constant mist, which is quite refreshing. A little bit chilly though, because it's also like 55 degrees, but uh, I'd rather be outside working like this than when it's 90 degrees. They're saying it's going to be 90 in a few days, which will be nice, but uh, not necessarily ideal for 
all of this. I might also, I talked in last week's vlog about how I need to pull up some of these ferns here and some of these ginger rhizomes. This weather might be a good time to do that just because the ferns will adjust better to being transplanted when the, the weather's cooler and more mild and rainy. But it's usually rainy here until like mid to late June, off and on rain. So that, I, don't, I don't know. Just something else I'm thinking about. There's plenty of stuff to do. Okay, already deviating from the plant things, but just look, I just needed to show off. Look, look at how ridiculous my house is. This is what I see when I walk in the room. Got the tortoise over here, hanging out, heat vent, chilling, partially on the dog bed, and then this little dork. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you cozy, Toby? That doesn't look comfortable at all. How'd you get so cute, Toby? He's such a good... <laughs> I think it's funny, there's an entire love seat over here that's basically for the dogs. I got this thing on clearance for like 75 bucks and I've had it for years. It's, I mean, it looks like this because it's like the dogs use it more than anything. And this is where you're gonna curl up. You're gonna curl up in the old tiny little recliner. I don't blame you, recliners are comfortable. And then Colby's just Colby, Colby's cute. Hey fish. Okay, I need to get back to work. This, it would be so nice. They splash. They splash a lot. And I have leads up there, but that's why they're splash. Back to plant things. That was a fun pet break. <laughs> I say pet break. Break as if I've, I haven't really done anything in this video yet, have I? I'm getting there. The weather's been nasty. Calm down. So as I was saying, I need to move all this stuff. I need the gorilla cart to do that, and I'm using that for something else. The gorilla carts become occupied. There, something came up. I am. Um, I just. I couldn't take it anymore. It was just. This was. If you couldn't tell, driving me nuts. Had to go. Just had to go. The problem is the blade on the chainsaw <laughs> wore out. It's. It. The blade's done. It needs to be sharpened or replaced. I don't know, but so now that's there. We've got like three quarters, if not more, through there, but there's just some... <laughs> Fine, moving forward. I need to handle this situation that I've created over here, and then I can get back to the other fun things. I did bring the Eureka Palm out though. It could use a little bit of pruning. That's normal. You know, palm trees just like any other plant, any other tree, they require pruning. They lose foliage. They get bad leaves on them. And, uh, you know, like usually once or twice a year, you have to go through and cut out old foliage, depending on the palm. Not all of them. Some grow very slowly and hold on to their foliage for a long time. The Eureka Palms though, generally once or twice a year. I have to go through and prune out the old stuff. That's no big deal. This did very well. That's probably going to look really weird on the screen. Did very well this past winter. It's looking good. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful plant. It'll be even more beautiful when I get that stuff cut out of there, uh, which just means I need to find my pruners. Anybody see my pruners? I can't find them. On my snippers. This isn't where they were. I just set them there. I went ahead and gave the areca palm a prune, got off some of the old foliage. You can see there's still some left. That's okay, I can get to that in a little bit. Mule palms, both of them have a couple of fronds that could use some tidying, but honestly, these have held up very well considering they were outside the majority of the winter. So you can see here, like here's an old spent frond. That needs to go. And it has a few more that are looking a little bit junky. I usually wait until these put out their first flush of foliage in the springtime, which you can see here. They've just started to open up some new spears. So that means I can go ahead and get the old stuff cut out and it can focus its energy on more healthy growth but really like I said considering these were outside all winter they're not looking too bad I mean they're looking really good they weren't out all winter that's an exaggeration I'd say these were inside for maybe a total of three and a half weeks it just kind of depended on when it got cold and I left them out until it got down to about 15 to 13 degrees Fahrenheit so that's pretty tough they've had a few years to adjust to it though so you can see like up here that was winter damage but like, that's not much compared to everything else on here. These have held up really, really well. I, the, I talk about them all the time. They're probably my favorite palm trees I have out here. And they've actually gotten so thick. I'm not even sure that I'm gonna be able to cut through this with my, also, I need to sharpen these. These are not doing the trick. I've been trying to prune things throughout the day and a lot of stuff just is not, there we go, finally. But there are like some little twigs I was trying to get through and. These weren't cutting it. <laughs> Cut, cutting, yeah, no, 
I'm not going to go too heavy on it. I like to go through and work with whatever's down lowest. And if those are the fronds that have damage on them, then they get cut. So you can see here, here's one of the lower fronds. Here's a lower frond. And then in here. So I could take off all three of those, but I don't think I need to do that. It seems a little bit dramatic. Actually, I might be happy with just what I did right there. I guess this... This one could probably go. It's one of those things where it's like once you start, it's hard to stop yourself. So actually, maybe I'm just going to take a step back and get some other things done. Uh, because like with the Eureka Palm, I had to stop myself because it was one of those things where there have been years before where I've gone to prune it. The next thing you know is like there's like nothing left because there's just something about when you have those snippers in your hands. It's just it's hard to stop. But that was also because like there were mealybugs or something on it. And I decided to just take all the foliage off it was the easiest way to get rid of them. It didn't get rid of them, but it certainly helped. I did that last fall, I believe, before I brought them in. And, I mean, this is all mostly new growth. Not all, but I didn't take everything off of them. And I did the same thing the year before. So, And they were fine. They grow so fast that it's never been an issue. And by doing that, it's just, you take less stuff inside with you. But it's not necessarily something I'd recommend. It's more of like a desperate attempt a last resort i've got my cart filled up with perennials mostly clearance perennials these are things i've had around for a while like this beautiful variegated boxwood looking fantastic isn't it this is like two bucks at a nursery on clearance last fall so it's got a little bit of recovering to do but it's okay i'm going to place these around where i want them to go some of them aren't ready to go in the ground yet though oh actually pretty much just those hostas the hookahs where they're going to go that area isn't ready yet but i did still want to show them because look at how beautiful the foliage is on these this variety is called guacamole i got these from lowe's last year and i know they sold them the year before last too so it's a plant that's been around for a while but they just have i think some of the prettiest foliage it's just green leaves but there's something about them that's just so pretty and i absolutely love them you know there's all these fancy varieties from like proven winners and monrovia lots of places hookahs and hostas there are tons of varieties but there's just something about the simplicity of just these bright kind of almost lime green neon green yellowy chartreuse i'm not great with colors they're pretty pretty green leaves something about them makes me happy these also get really big leaves on them too i'm going to want to put these someplace where they're going to get uh, actually probably a pretty decent amount of sun more so than i'll be giving to like i think that that's a black cherry or rose or something like that from proven wonders did you want to know i can tell you if you are wondering, Primo Wild Rose. You see that? That's this one, which has absolutely stunning foliage, and I love it. This one back here is Primo Peachberry Ice, which I think that the three of these look very nice together, but more for like a fall kind of thing, particularly these two. And this Peachberry Ice actually gets really, really nice orange color on it, the more sun it gets. And the plan was I was going to have these alternating around something, but I don't have the right ratio to do that so i have something else that i'm going to end up to wait no 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 i do have the right ratio because <laughs> i have this peach berry ice over here in this magnolia planter that i had decided i'm going to take that out and replace it with a dolce silver gumdrop which i have sitting right here so i have another dolce silver gumdrop so it'll match the other side better that impatience not going there it's just sitting there for right now but so i do yep that's Always fun when you remember you have plants scattered all over the place. You know, none of that matters. I haven't even gotten there yet. We'll talk about that when the time comes. Probably won't be for a while. Oh, the sun's out. It's been days. This vlog, you put, did you have no way of knowing this? I'm on day five, 13 minutes, five days. That's it's just the on and off and the on and off with the rain. And the sun's out. Sun hasn't been out since I started working on these guys. And that was last Saturday. Today's Friday so nice to be outside here's what i've gotten done uh, there's a lot of like rock music blasting in the background from the construction next door so i'm gonna try and talk through that hopefully this video won't get a copyright strike as things started in the video i have this area here that i need to clean up you remember and here it is now there's still some still some things to work with there's a bunch of scraps and things sitting over here because working on repairing the hot tub too there's <laughs> lots of things that need repairing out here always but the areca palm is out which you already know but it's actually over here where it goes patios clean ish i think that i have solved if you've been watching the last few vlogs there's been some electrical issues running down here from there's a fountain back there that's hidden in this light i think i resolved that so i should be able to put that extension cord away maybe I'm, I'm gonna give it a couple days and make sure everything keeps working but otherwise look clean 
kinda. Not really ready to plant it up, but it's still kinda clean. It hasn't been warm enough for Colby to come outside in like the last two weeks, so the lettuce is just absolutely flourishing. Okay, and then the other area I needed to fix up was over here. This is where I've been doing all of my like repots and everything. It's kinda where I had to do all the big repottings because it's near a drain. I can just wash everything back. But anyways, that needed to get cleaned up too. So here's what that looks like now. Big improvement. Still junky and ratty, but definitely an improvement. Things are cleaned up and cleared. And now, pardon the shadows, I'm gonna go ahead and get these pots taken care of here. I, it just hasn't been quite nice enough out to put the tropicals in here yet. I've still been trying to keep a lot of the like tropical tropicals over near the growth space in case I need to move them in. Normally not something I have to worry about in late May, but this year's just been weird. It, usually this is all done by like the second week of May, even earlier than that, but it's okay, is what it is, going with the flow. So I need to go ahead and pot up what I want to do with these two Bird of Paradise planters here. The, everything that's sitting in those, that's just temporary. I have other intentions for those plants, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah, now that the sun's out, even though it's not gonna be for very long, I can get some more planting done. Won't be able to get a ton done because it's supposed to start raining in like 45 minutes, but anything is progress. Well, that got kind of wonky, didn't it? Need to straighten that out. I didn't even realize because it was buried underneath that bromeliad. Oh, this is going to be a really tight fit. That's something I was wondering about when I repotted this bird of paradise right here. It was going to, I just, I don't, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to fit in there. Oh, I think I can make it work. We will see. There's a lot of stuff I was planning on putting in these pots. I'm going to play around with it for a while and hopefully when I come back something beautiful will have happened. Okay, yeah, I like that. This was basically the plan that I had the entire time for these planters. There's one change I need to make and it's, you see this croton that I put in here? Yeah, that's not going to work. You can't even see it. That's a total waste of a beautiful plant. So I will pull that out. I didn't even bother putting one over here. After I toss them together, it just didn't make sense to have them both in here, right? So I'll pull that one out later. This is rough. There's still plenty of changes to make, more just that there are other things I would like to add into these. Also, I have the fan going. I hope that's not too loud. It's blowing the bugs away and I really I'd prefer to not turn it off. But, you know, I'm sure y'all let me know if it's annoying and then I won't do it again. That's not true. If it's 100 degrees outside, I'll probably still do it. Anyways, as I was saying, so the challenge here was to actually get all of these plants into these planters because I wanted them potted up inside the nursery containers that the Bird of Paradise were in. That way, in the fall, when I lift them out, then those plants come with it. And then it, basically these planters are ready to go every single year. All I have to do is drop the nursery can into these big blue pots, filling around it and add annuals, whatever I want to do with that. But that way the uh, tea plants, the Cordelin fruticosas that are in here, and the Colocasias, those will all still be there every year, hopefully. So yeah, I did have to spend a good amount of time working the roots <laughs> to get those nice and loosened up so I could divide them properly and get them potted into these containers. But with the Cordelin fruticasas, I've done that many, many, many times, and they've always been fine with it. They usually like recover very quickly. Like, half the time, they don't even have any response to it. They just keep on doing their thing. Colocasia is a little bit of a different story. Colocasia, alocasia, bananas, those are plants where like if you tap their roots, they throw a fit. So these will probably be a little bit sad for a couple weeks, but that's okay. They'll recover. Luckily, it's supposed to keep on raining for at least another 10 days or so here, which is not great for making the YouTube videos, but it's fantastic for the plants. Oh, and I probably should have mentioned the variety of these elephant ears. It's called Maui Gold. I wanted to use something that had a very light green color to it. I actually had some really awesome colladiums that I had ordered and that fell through. Those would have been perfect for this location, but like I said, couldn't get a hold of them. And then there were some Xanthosomas, which are in the same family as these guys that say a little bit smaller and they have really pretty lime green foliage. Again, that fell through too. And I think the Maui Gold will be fine. The color of the foliage on them is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted for this space. I think it has a great contrast with those cordelins that are in the back. You can see how that foliage is cupped up right there. It's because I disturbed the roots and they need to be watered in. I haven't watered them in yet because I was debating what I wanted to do with the annuals around these. I think I'm going to go ahead and wait a little bit before I start tucking the annuals in around them. I just want some time to think about it. That's really all it is because there's just there's so many options going through my mind of what I would like to do. And then there's the, you know, expectations versus reality. Like how much can I actually put in these pots 
and it also needs to be compatible with the light and all the other requirements for these plants. The elephant ears, they may end up stretching out and leaning forward late summer when the angle of the sun changes. Hard to say, I don't know. The alocasias that were over here last year did do that, so I would expect that these would be even more extreme with it, but I also have them planted further into the front of the pot, so might not be an issue. So last year I did something fairly similar to this, kind of. I had the Bird of Paradise in here. I used Cordelin Fruticosa Red Sister. They were much smaller than these Marias that are in here. I like the size a lot more on the Marias. The Red Sisters, they were teeny tiny little things that had gotten on clearance at Lowe's, and they were great plants, but they pretty much disappeared by the end of the growing season behind the begonias. I had planted dragon's wing begonias in the front of these. So I'm not doing the dragon's wing begonias. I do have a few that I'm going to tuck into some other areas, but they're very small. So it's possible that I may end up tucking some in in there, but they still, by the end of the growing season, will be so big that they'll kind of eat everything up and you won't really be able to see them in there. So I'll likely be using some sort of impatient inside there something with either orange or pink flowers because the lime green with the purples and the pinks and purples and things like that is kind of a theme i've been trying to carry around in the garden somewhat like trying to have a certain level of consistency but not so much that everything blends together and that's why i haven't gone in and potted up any trailers in these pots yet because i'm still on the fence with my options and well actually i mean i pretty much know what i want to do here the <laughs> the issue is i'm trying to do that have your cake and eat it too thing, which I've been pretty successful at this year. Just basically saying, I don't care. I'm gonna do whatever I want to. I don't care if it goes together and makes people happy. If I like it, that's what I'm doing. The problem is what I'm referring to right now is this alyssum. I really wanna have lobularia around here. This is a seating area. There are tables over here and chairs and everything. And the smell, I always talk about it. The smell is just intoxicating. I absolutely love the fragrance that comes off of these plants. But I don't really think that those go together. What do you think? I say no. Not really. So I can figure something else out, a different way to tuck the alyssum into some other planters that are in the area. So I was thinking purple wave petunias over here, potentially. Uh, they will have very nice fragrance and they will smell nice. It's not the same as an alyssum. You have to get a little bit closer to them to be able to get that aroma. But I think that that will look nice. And then the last thing to mention here is that this is... Well, that's got to go. I'm <laughs> my voice just cracked. That's going to go to my front porch. So uh, I know this doesn't look quite right. We need to make a quick change here. Okay, that's better. Now you know what I'm talking about. So this Adenidia palm that's right here, that's what I've put here for like the last two years or so. I had a different spot that I used to keep this and I think I might do that again this year as far as moving it. I'll explain in just a moment here. So the Adenidia, I like it here. This is an Adenidia morelia. It's a Christmas palm. It just got delivered from the place where I store my palm trees in the winter and it, it they didn't do a very good job taking care of it. I'm not thrilled about that. It doesn't look too hot. It'll flush back out though and that's going to be okay. But the thing is, while I think this looks neat here, something about that double trunk, that V-shape, and then with the fanning that's on each of these Bird of Paradise on each side. This doesn't really work for me. Something that was kind of bugging me last year, I really think that whatever goes in the center here, oh, I need to stake that up. See, I couldn't even tell when the magnolia was there. I, <laughs> what I was saying is I think whatever goes in the center here needs to be a solitary trunked plant in order for this to look right. It's hard to beat the tropical look with the rings on the trunks of the Adenidia palms. It's just, they're just so pretty, but I don't know. It's not working for me. So I think I may take the Adenidia palm and put it over here by this light, which is where I've had it in years past. And there are a lot of reasons that that makes more sense. I'll get to that. And then put something with the solitary trunk right here in the middle. Good thing I have an extra queen palm back here. Pardon the, part, that's a, that's a long story. That obviously is not staying there. I just had to move it to work on cutting out the magnolia tree. Anyways, I think that this would look good in the middle there. And that's partially because I know queen palms are considered very basic, especially down in Florida. I think they're even invasive. But their trunks, there's a lot of texture and interest going on on those trunks. When you're sitting out over in that area we were just in at the table, that would be very visible. And then there's a different texture going on up above everything. Because see, the problem here is that this Adenidia palm, one of the things that's 
kind of bugged me a little bit about having it over here. I love having it over here, but it kind of disappears. And it's such a pretty plant that I don't want it to disappear. I want to make sure that it stands out. And, uh, and the more I look at it on camera, it doesn't really look like it's doing the thing that I remember it doing last year that really bothered me. Hmm. Well, no, I think the real dilemma here is just that I really like Ed and Nydia palms, so it just it just makes me happy just seeing it over here, period. Uh, the issue here, here's why I'm talking all this out. I have enough time to talk about it, not enough time to execute anything. I have like maybe 15 minutes till it starts raining again. And that's why I'm just talking about it instead of actually doing it. Cause normally, you know, I'll, I'll mock things up and I'd go ahead and pull the queen palm over here and throw it in a pot and see how I like it. I only have this one pot, this one right here. So if I do this, I'm going to have to pull the Adenidia palm from the container. I need that container right here. I have a different container I can put it in. I'll show it to you. See, so this is the container that I'd be moving the Adenidia palm into. I actually, I really like this pot a lot, but I don't know if I like it for sitting in between these blue pots. See, this is why I like to kind of mock things up because now that I'm sitting here and looking at it, I don't hate the idea of this pot sitting in between these two. Originally, I was pretty dead set on the pot that's in between these two blue pots needing to be a little bit taller and more of a vase shape since these are so wide and kind of squat. Not really, they're pretty proportionate, but they don't have that taller shape to them. And I think that having the pot in the middle have that taller shape looks nice. The thing is though, I like these colors together better. And this is slightly taller, not by much. Also, there is an anthill on here. That was fun. I had to scrub a bunch of ants off my arms. I kind of, oh, huh, hmm. This might change everything. It's also starting to miss, so I don't know what I'm gonna do here. May as well put it together, right? Since I decided that I kind of like that pot there when I didn't before. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I would prefer something that had a taller shape to it, but that'll do. And uh, the queen palm there, I gotta say, I think I like it better. It won't be planted up that high. I don't have holes drilled in the bottom of this pot yet in my gorilla cart ate my drill bit. I still haven't been able to get that out, like the plastic fuse to it. And it's a, it's really in there. So I have the queen palm sitting on a milk crate. That way when it rains, it won't be sitting in standing water. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I do think it looks better in person than what I'm seeing on my viewfinder. It's like I said, there's just something nice about all the textures that you see on the trunks of these queen palms. And then those fronds will come a little bit more forward as this flushes out. It's getting ready to open up a new leaf and it'll open up another one. And I'm okay with this. The only difference, I mean, I'm I'm always very drawn to the Edenidias to the, it's right here. It's sitting right next to me now. I'm always more drawn to the Edenidia palms because one, I just, I love the trunks on them. I actually think though that this will be better displayed and seen over here, right next to this dolphin lamp. That's where it used to be and the only reason I moved it was because the foliage was about the same height. Oh, oh almost dropped my camera. The only reason I moved it was because the foliage was about the same height as those globes back there. But it's grown since then and it will be above that. So what I had done before, I'm trying to get things in frame without standing out in the mist. I had a Robolini palm here which I love, but the Robolini's foliage is about the same height as this windmill palm. And that windmill palm is really pretty. I don't want to hide that. I want to be able to see it and I'll be able to see it through the trunks of the Edenidia. So this will be more lit up at night because it's going to be right next to that coach light. I'll be able to see through it and uh, have the windmill palm in the background. I, that's such a pretty palm tree. I don't want to hide that. So while the palm tree snob part of me is like, no, no, I need something special in the middle here, like in at an idiot. But I also don't mind just the classic queen palm look. And like I said, I really do prefer these three colors together with the aqua to that lighter gray. I think that looks better. And then another thing, there's actually, there's a few more other things. This Adenidia palm is rooted in here so heavily, which is fantastic. It's a healthy plant, despite how the foliage looks, but it's really not a lot of room in here for annuals. Like it's really difficult to get in here and dig and plant anything up. And it's because of that, that I just don't really like the idea of it being over here as much because I won't be able to continue planting things in there. And I want whatever goes in the middle here to have a lot of flowers in it with a lot of fragrance and a lot of color. I'm not going to be able to do that with this guy right here. That won't work. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to try and get this planted up, get it at least started. <sighs> These bugs. Oh my gosh. I can't even talk. Like I said, I think I have like 15 or 20 minutes till it starts storming again. If there's not a video next week other than on Saturday, it's because I was doing this instead of filming that video. 
Oops. Got my drill bit out. Doesn't really matter though, because I just realized that this isn't the bit I would use for that putt. Anyways, need to go find the other bit. With pots like these, I like to use one of these big circle bits in it. You see here how the middle of this container, it kind of comes up a little bit. So uh, drilling a hole there is great, but I want to have something more along the edge where the edge meets the bottom. That way I will never have to worry about water collecting inside of this and anything rotting out. That's more than enough drainage. But you see here, see how the hole comes over the edge just a little bit? See, once it's flipped over, like you really can't even tell. The only reason I can see anything is because there's still some shavings from the plastic over there, but I can clean that up and it won't even be noticeable. It's, oh, this is what I used to put my water, well, that's fine. I'll put the water lily somewhere else. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. I'm liking that. Look at it. There's so much room for activities. That an idiot, I told you. That, that that one over here, right there? Nah, there's no room to plant stuff around it, but look at oh there's so much space for possibility. Those possibilities are? I don't know, because now just so many doors have opened that I don't really want to rush into actually planting up the annuals in there because there's so many possibilities. But the croton that will although I can see the croton better now. Do I need to put a croton in each one? Oh, what just happened? My thinking here was that since I had mentioned earlier about how I feel like the Kalakaja was covering up the croton that I would pull the croton out and what I would have preferred to do would have been to put the croton in around that Adenidia but there's no space that pot's full of roots but there's plenty of room in here for the crotons but now I can see the crotons. What's that about? How come I can see them now but I couldn't before? I mean I know it's a different angle but I feel like it's a little bit more than that. I think it's because there isn't as much distraction happening here with what was in that magnolia planter. Hmm. I guess it would still probably be better to pull those out and then use them over here. I don't know. I'm gonna think about it. Okay. It took a couple minutes to think about it. Just wanted to kind of play around with some ideas. Is I want these to go together. That's important, of course. The pot in the middle, of course, still needs to stand out, which is going to be kind of a tall order because I got to say, these came out pretty freaking awesome. I like these Bird of Paradise planters a lot. And I don't have the right quantities to fully match them together, which I don't, I don't want to fully match them together. I think I have enough of the Cordelin Maria to put some more in the back. That might look okay. I like that. It does blend together an awful lot though, but I think that that's kind of okay because I do want this to flow together, but still stand out a little bit. What about those crotons? Oh, and I have a Cordelin Fruticosa Kiwi I'd like to use in this too. That might be too much Cordelin though. I'm not sure. No, okay, I like that. I was thinking that that would be too much cordolin together, but that looks good. The croton that's in here, I think having crotons in these might actually be too much, and I have a different planter that I'll be doing in a separate video that I could use that in, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Yeah, I'm really liking the direction that this is going. I think this looks really nice. Still some spots to fill in. I mean, not a lot, mostly in here. I'd like to get some flowers and things going. I might do like a button ginger, some sun impatience, or something like that. I'm going to need some time to think about it. It's starting to get moist and misty, so this will all be in next week's garden tour, the May garden tour. That will be out Saturday in place of a vlog. I'll try and make sure to do some vlogging, like at the end of it maybe. It's just with this weather, it's gotten a little bit tricky to pull off getting things done and filming things. It's only for a few weeks. You know, things always clear up around here, like I said, around mid-June or so, and this is pretty excessive, but that's okay. Like I said, it's great for the plants. I'm not mad about it, and the thing that I like here, what I wanted to do that I didn't think I was going to be able to do because of the, this guy, the Adenidia palm, is that this ties together everything else I've been doing in the last few videos, which is what I was kind of going for, but didn't really think I'd be able to do it. You can see over here, the cordolins, the alocages, the queen palms, the uh, kiwi, and the maria. That's very similar to what's going on over here. And everything I did last week over here with the marias. Gosh, I, I just staked that up. I gotta do it again with weather. The storms have been knocking things over. Slash, I didn't do a very good job of staking those up. With the greens and the reds and the colors blending together while underneath the queen palm, that's kind of what I was going for over there. Sort of. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but this way it rounds things off from here and all the way up. What well, we don't need to, that'll all be in the garden tour. We'll talk about that and this will be finished as well as a whole bunch of other projects. Hopefully, like I said, I mentioned the forecast. Everything's kind of up in the air. It looks like next week's gonna be worse than this week. Like eight days of off and on rain. Hopefully the 
off part will be enough time to get some stuff done outside. So if there's not a video in the middle of the week, I apologize in advance. It's just that I didn't, it's, it's a bad, but I can't, I can't help it. I can't control the weather. What I hadn't mentioned was most of those plants that were over there in the beginning of the video, I said I need to move. I have most of the shade loving plants over here until they're ready to go into their permanent location. And then I tuck the other annuals over there behind those queen palms where they would get some sun but shade but off the patio. Oh, and the last time I'll say, oh, probably, this is the Robolini palm I was talking about earlier. A little bit wonky, right? This is the one that I was saying kind of blocks that windmill palm. Yeah, it blocks the windmill palm. And also, you saw how that trunk was wonky? I gotta get that put someplace in full sun this year to help correct that weird, awkward sideways growth. Because like I said, the sun's a little weird here late summer, and I, I, that's gonna continue to grow a little bit off unless I get it someplace in direct blazing sun. Well, I had a good time. It was a tricky week getting through the weather, but everything turned out okay got like an hour or so of sunshine, I'll take it. It's enough time to get outside and have some fun. I've been doing a lot of other things too. I haven't like only been out here working when I have the camera. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Just can't do it with the, don't want to get the camera wet. That's all. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and everything's going okay for you. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to y'all. What y'all got going on with your plants and in your gardens. Got all my social media linked down below and all the other YouTube stuff there. I appreciate it and thank you. Oh, and the other, this is going to seem nitpicky, but I'm thinking I'll probably pull the taller cordelins from the Bird of Paradise planters on each side and have those in the middle and only put the shorter ones over here. I know it sounds dumb, but it doesn't it look like it looks a little bit too chaotic with them going up and down and up and down and up and down. So that way all the tall ones will be in the very back of the queen palm planter and then there'll be shorter ones on each side. Does anybody care? I think it's relevant. Eh, who knows? It's each his own. Just wanted to make that clarification that I recognize that the ones in the middle here should be taller than the ones on the sides. That or it should have like an up and then a down. Or an up here and then down here, then up here and then down. Something like that. But I don't like it just being all over the place. That, that doesn't work. Okay, like I said, hope everybody's doing well. I say it again because I mean it. Hopefully enjoying your weekend as best as you can. Staying safe, staying healthy. Staying positive. And if you're having a crummy day and everything's not okay, that's okay too. It's part of the way things are going right now. Don't be afraid to feel your feels. And if you could play with your plants, that's like one of my favorite ways to calm myself down and relax a little bit. This is this is my therapy. It's one of the great things about plants, right? They're so therapeutic. Even if it's tied up into a vlog of just all over the place chaos. But that's how I do. How do you do? Probably more organized than this, but this is it's part of my process. All right, as a man, see these are, they're already thrown a fit. It's to be expected, they'll bounce back, they'll be all right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.